Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about my personal conversion story. This might come as a surprise to some of you because technically I was born into the church, technically. And I attended my whole life, but there was definitely a duality in me at a certain point in my life that I want to share about because I feel like this is something that a lot of people or most people go through at some point in their lives with the church and just kind of like a struggle that they deal with and it was a definitely a big struggle for me so I hope you enjoy the story like I said I was technically born into the church my family we would always attend church religiously and for the most part while growing up I didn't have any real doubts in the church or the gospel or anything. I just kind of accepted pretty much everything that was said to me or read to me. That's just kind of how it was, honestly. I had great leaders in the church that would teach us, you know, and they would, you know, do their best to teach us like gospel principles. But honestly, all we learned was like the really like basic stuff. You, we wouldn't ever learn anything more beyond you know, that Joseph Smith, he had a vision, he saw Jesus, and he saw God. He restored the church, and now we have a prophet on earth. When I got to around the age of 17 or 18, um, I started having these doubts, not even only about the church itself, but just God in general. God, Jesus, just everything. I just had like strong doubts about it and I don't I can't recall exactly what made me initially have those doubts I don't remember I don't remember what was the trigger but I've always been a very pragmatic and like logic type of thinking kind of uh, individual so if to me it didn't really make sense it was really hard to reconcile you know like just like science you know like the big bang theory dinosaurs evolution you know just so many things just basic like science things and just like and just the you know the bible itself the book of mormon just the things that would happen there and just like it, like for the most part didn't make sense and honestly it just bothered me just as a very pragmatic thinker it bothered me and i it was just hard for me to believe in something that it's so easily disproven by like basic science, you know? Another big factor was pers definitely like personal issues of mine. I definitely um, struggled with perfectionism and not feeling like worthy, as, you know, as a member of the church, um, not feeling I was good enough. Th those are definitely other issues um, I think that compile upon, upon um, my um, pragmatic way of thinking you know so it's just this ball of like issues and doubts and personal feelings and honestly um, I couldn't reconcile them for the longest time so I decided to become like agnostic even though I couldn't prove there was a God I couldn't prove there wasn't a God either but I definitely had issues with like religious institutions. I've always been a little cynical when it comes to just mankind in general and just like their um, nature. So like a religious institution run by man, it's very hard for me to um, trust that institution. But I knew I couldn't just be an agnostic my whole life. I either was going to become strictly like atheist, like no God, no nothing, or there was a God and there's per you know this higher purpose in life, afterlife, you know, all this stuff. Um, it had to be one or the other. What I started to do was I started to do a personal like spiritual journey. And what that entailed was starting to just consume anything I knew about religion like that I had out at my fingertips so I remember checking out books and like videos and movies on like religion from the library and just reading them and I read about a lot of religions most of the big religions biggest religions there are you know uh, in the world 
and I came to a conclusion that, at least my way of thinking, if there is a god, the god that I believe in more is definitely a biblical god, you know? So, it definitely a branch of Christianity. Sorry, Judaism. So, I decided to read the Old Testament. That I wanted to just start from the beginning. And I started at Genesis, and I read a lot of it. I didn't read the whole Old Testament, but I read a lot of the Old Testament. And it was super boring. But I started to see something, and I started to catch like important principles in the Old Testament and like God's way of thinking and how he works with man. So I was praying during this time while I was reading the Old Testament. I just wanted to know if God was real. And reading the Old Testament and praying to God, I did receive like enlightenment that there was a God. And he was most likely the biblical God, whatever, you, however you want to interpret that. The next question was, for me, was, was Jesus the Son of God? And that's when I turned to the New Testament. I basically did the same process. I started in the first book of the New Testament and started reading and I started praying. Is Jesus Christ the Son of God? And even more so, then reading the Old Testament, I received much more enlightenment and like revelation that Jesus was real. Jesus is our savior and Jesus is the way. I was certain about this. I'm very sure about this, but I didn't know now what was his church if there was a church, you know? And the problem issue with this is that I was supposed to go on my mission in a couple of months. I didn't know what to do because I definitely felt like a societal pressure to go on a mission, but I didn't have a belief in the LDS church. So it put me in a really like weird situation because like I said, I struggle with perfectionism and just a lot of, a lot of like self judgment and stuff. And I didn't want people to think you know, that I was a bad person for not serving a mission. You know, that was definitely a factor in it. So I came to a little bit of a justification in myself. And that justification was that maybe I'm not sure about the LDS church. I'm not sure if it's true, but maybe if I was a missionary and I could just preach about Jesus, I don't have to like share the whole Joseph Smith part of the lessons. I could just talk, teach like the Jesus parts. Um, that would be a good thing because I'm preaching Jesus and I knew Jesus was the way. I just didn't know which way it was, you know? So I met up with my bishop, had my uh, mission interview and I just totally lied. I totally lied that I had a testimony of Joseph Smith. I lied that I had a testimony of the church. I lied about all that. And they sent me off to the MTC. And just my thoughts about the MTC, the MTC is an interesting place. It doesn't prepare you for the day-to-day -day things as a missionary. It's more for you to feel like inspired. And it was hard for me to feel inspired because I just didn't believe in everything they were saying. And during this time, I started to read the Book of Mormon. I've never read the Book of Mormon all the way through in my life. And I know it's kind of late to start reading the Book of Mormon in the mission at the MTC. It's kind of late for me to do that, but that's how it happened for me. And my first time through, I didn't get too much out of it initially. There were a couple of stories that stuck with me, but my practical mind just had still had such a hard time with it. You know, just like all the things I've heard about like, you know, horses not being in America, metal and copper and silver, you know, all these things that are not supposed to be there. It's just so hard to read it and knowing, you know, like these things are like scientifically like hard to prove, you know? So I went through the whole MTC, still not sure really if this was the church of Jesus Christ. All I knew was I really loved Jesus. That's all I really knew, that I loved Jesus a lot. And they finally sent me out to the mission field. 
but they didn't send me to Argentina where I was supposed to go. They sent me to Nashville, Tennessee because I didn't fill out my visa work in time. So I had to wait in Nashville until my visa was processed. I was in the mission field as a missionary and it was kind of crazy. I, I did enjoy it, but I did have an extremely hard time because the first lesson you teach as a missionary is the restoration of the gospel. And literally I would be in a lesson and I would avoid talking about Joseph Smith. I would avoid talking about that. I would, you know, share the part where it says God is our father, he is our children, that, he, you know, he had apostles, he had prophets, and then kind of leave the rest to my companion because I just didn't feel comfortable, like, sharing that with people because I didn't personally believe it. So by this point, I was reading through the Book of Mormon a second time. I started to catch more of the principles and like doctrines that were teaching but I still hadn't received like an answer if the Book of Mormon was a true book. My companion at the time he got very sick and we couldn't work for a couple of days so we were literally just stuck in the apartment for like a few days and I was just kind of praying I was just kind of praying while I was reading and it was just like this marathon of me trying to figure out if this book was true because I was just tired of it. I was tired of not knowing, not knowing if what I was teaching or sharing was true or not, you know? And I received a very strong personal revelation. And this revelation, very different from what I had received before, before, it was kind of an enlightenment, like an understanding of things. Like things were making sense in my mind. Even though I didn't have like factual new information, things were clear in my mind about God, about Jesus, and about just kind of like my salvation in general, right? But this revelation was very different because this revelation was literally words being spoken to me, like in my mind. I don't know if I heard a voice or if it was just very faint or it was just like directly to my mind, but these words were communicated to me. And I sat down and I wrote them all. And it's like this paragraph. And the paragraph essentially um, talks about the Savior. It talks about who he is and his purpose on why he came to earth. Even rereading it today, it's very shocking to me because it's so profound the things that are written that I wrote that day. I know it couldn't have come from me as a young missionary in the mission field. The clear like doctrine that I wrote down was revelation. And part of that revelation was the realization that the church I was looking for, the church of Jesus Christ, was and happened to be the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was very much like a tada like moment in my brain that the Church of Jesus Christ also happens to be named the Church of Jesus Christ and it just like all clicked together and in the next month or two I spiritually grew uh, like a hundred times more hundred times more than I ever was before um, just when it came to gospel understanding doctrine understand uh, like doctrinal understanding and I felt for the first time as a missionary which I didn't feel at all before. Do I still have doubts? Do I still have questions about the church, church history, church leadership? Yes, I absolutely do. And I, and I have like personal, like even issues with like cultural aspects of the church. But something that hasn't changed is that experience that I had as a young missionary. No matter what happens and no matter what type of evidences or anything that someone can show me, it doesn't change the fact that I know 
this is the Church of Jesus Christ. If I didn't know that this was the Church of Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be here, honestly. I could be doing so many other things with my time. But it's one of those things I just cannot deny. But yeah, thank you for listening. So that's kind of my personal conversion story. Feel free to share your experiences and kind of your thoughts also. I feel like everyone has to go through kind of this process at some point of their lives, right? When it comes to the church, they just have to find out if it's true for themselves. I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you later. Bye.